you you must be like a zen monk are you alexi like if i i where my office is I, i'm in near one of the busiest roads in hong kong there's queens road central here and then there's some other ones and traffic sometimes can be quite can cause some people some anxiety but if i was to drop you in a traffic jam in in Hong Kong, would you just be because of the carryover from your capacity to to manage anxiety and that panic state that most people would be experiencing 136 meters under? Do, do you find that it carries over into your normal life? It certainly does. I I think that these extreme conditions, being underwater, not breathing. And also actually doing that it, uh, on the surface as well, like dry breath holds, that teaches us because it's such an extreme situation for our body, like not breathing is the hardest thing we can do. Like our body needs oxygen every second. So if we learn consciously how to hold our breath with the right mindset, not like what we're pushing, like we can do the breath holds in the wrong way. Like, like, like really like yeah. push through, apply a lot of willpower and like like just to get to a certain number, like, okay, I want to hold my breath for three minutes or four minutes and I'll like just hold it. So this is the wrong approach. It's, it's an approach where it does, it's not developing sensitivity and awareness and being able to not react. So there's a strong reaction and we just hold it. That's mm -hmm. not the right approach. And if we train it in a right way where we feel the urge to breathe, we want to breathe, but we relax and we observe our body performing blood shift I mentioned earlier and the blood shift would be yeah. like our blood vessels uh, pushing the blood from extremities from our skin our legs and arms like sh shrinking compressing there reducing the blood flow so we spend less oxygen uh, on our muscles and it's really easy for our body like our legs can perform really well without oxygen we're really efficient like our, our muscles are really efficient in this mode but our brain needs oxygen all the time. So that's why our body reacts in this way. It just directs the blood to the lungs, to the heart, to the brain. And even though like we want to breathe, our oxygen in our tissues and muscles can reduce. Our oxygen in our brain will stay in the same level for a pretty long time. Like I was testing my breath hold recently, like, like four minutes, four minutes, 30 breath hold. And my oxygen level dropped in my blood. And like we measured it on my nose, on the fingertip and my ear as well, and it was dropping from 100% in the bloodstream to uh, 78, 76, this range, after four minutes of half breath hold. Yeah. But our normal uh, oxygenation of our brain is different. Our, each part of our body have different uh, oxygen levels. Our blood, normally uh, oxygen levels it would be 98, 97, 86. If you do a couple of inhales, it'll be 100%. But our brain oxygenation is 60 to 70%. Right, so even mm. if uh, I do I do my breath hold for five minutes and my oxygen level drop, let's say to sixty percent or seventy percent, it dropped in my in my body in my uh, in, we can see this in the blood oxygenation, but in the brain oxygenation it will be the same. So our body is really really good in directing oxygen to their to our brain and stop wasting oxygen on other parts of the body which can do just fine without oxygen, like like our muscles, and that's the blood shift just mm. like uh, shrinking blood vessels and extremities and expanding blood vessels in our lungs and heart and brain 